Welcome to TMI, the Men's Initiative, where we interview leaders in the community and the body of Christ who have a proven track record and foundation of spiritual growth and success. These men will talk about spiritual well-being, men's mental health, relationship tips, health and body care, family, and more. after God's own heart. Um, I was brought up crazy, you know. I brought up with no identity, um, no direction. Um, no one to speak that into my life, no one to uh, affirm who I was and what I was made for. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I took time in the streets. I took time in the streets. I gravitated to the streets. I felt like love was in the streets. Um, so that's why I spent most of my time. Um, now, I'm a man of God, you know, uh, seeking to be everything that God has called me to be. Um, in this world where things are forever changing, we serve a God who's always the same. <clears throat> so, as a man who who seeks to um, to get it right, more times than none, uh, I run into challenges, experiences, <clears throat> choices that have to be made. Um, and, and I pray that God leads me with, with every choice that's made. And I do believe that my background plays a huge part in that decision-making um, and those challenges. Um, and I've noticed that no one speaks to or ministers to um, those who are from where I'm from. Either they don't know how or they fear what to expect. So that's why I take this so serious, you know, because I know that there's a group of people out there who feels forgotten about, who feels like no one, no one can relate to them. They're on edge, they rough, they got issues, they got habits. They got hate. I was called to that. He said before I was born, he knew me. He formed me in my mother's womb. The Bible says that he chose me for this particular time. He chose me. God wouldn't choose me without equipping me with the necessary tools to, to win the fight. So we already won, we already won. I'm just trying to get there, you know, I'm trying to get there and leave an impact. I remember one day I had been binging. I guess I was up about three or four days. Uh, I found myself at a gas station and my mother had been shot 14 times and survived, um, but she was recovering. And I found myself in front of this gas station, cold, hungry, fiending, in despair, ready to give up, ready to throw in the towel, whatever it may be, whatever that looked like. Um, and I called my mom and I said, Mama, I said, I can't keep going. I can't keep going like this. And she said, well, baby, I'm trying to recover myself. Call the ambulance. Tell them where you are. Let them know your condition. 
And so I did just that. I hung up the phone and I called 911. And I had to be about 21, 22 years old on crack cocaine, strung out, homeless, on the streets. I had had enough. The ambulance, they came, got me, put me in the back. And I still remember to this day, they took me to the annex. From the annex, they asked me, are you ready to go back to the streets? Because I wasn't a paying patient. And I said, no, I'll die out there. So they got with Phoenix Center, enrolled in the Phoenix Center, okay? Still not a paying patient. So they asked the same question. Think you're ready for this? Re ready for life again? I'll die out there. I can't make it. So they sent me to Turning Point, which was a place for men uh, to regroup. You know, they had gently used clothing. They had a, a dry food pantry. They had transportation back and forth to work, room and board. Um, they had services. And this was a place where I could start over, I could regroup. And I found myself living again, working, you know, making an honest living. I'm not robbing no more. I'm not stealing no more. I'm not breaking in folk houses. I'm not putting pistols in people's face and taking what's theirs. No, I'm making an honest living. I'm doing the right thing. But it didn't stop there. I went on Christmas vacation to visit my mom. And during that vacation, some weed was passed around and I might edit, it, you know. Went back to Turning Point, didn't know that they were gonna hit me with a drug test and they kicked me out the program. I moved back with my mom. And she was ecstatic, she was happy. She couldn't wait for me to come back home. But I knew and God knew that I needed structure. I needed boundaries. I needed a change of environment. So needless to say, with time, I started back sniffing cocaine. Never went back to crack, but I started back sniffing cocaine. And with sniffing cocaine came the need for a rush. So I started robbing again. It was a cycle, ongoing cycle, and that's all I knew. I got hit for 15 years. I got hit with 15 years in the penitentiary. Um, armed robbery, possession of a weapon during commission of a violent crime, second degree burglary. 15 years. Smallest thing on the yard, I'll never forget. It was, a, it was a guy who came, he had a guitar. He was alone by himself. And he invited us to the rock. That's what we call the rock, where we sit down on the rock and watch TV with our head, headphones on, earbuds in, or whatever it may be. But he sat there on that rock and he played that guitar. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be your living sanctuary for you. And to this day, that song, it registers in my spirit because I was tired and I was ready to give up. And I knew that the life I was living wasn't the life that God had designed for me. I knew that there was better, yeah, despite my environment. Why do you think God spends so much time telling you who you are? Because your atmosphere can lie to you. Your upbringing can lie to you. God is able to look at a, a shaky, impotent Peter and say, hello, rock. Or the scared little boy in Elisha and say, hello, mighty men of valor. Or Abraham who's married to a barren wife and say, hello, father of many nations. God calls you who you are because he sees who you are. Even when we sabotage ourselves. Keep living for who God sees in you. And watch how he continues to elevate you and put you in rooms that you could never think of. 
Let God be God. So if you would like to connect with me, reach out, probably listen to some music or something. You know, uh, Facebook, Al Harris. Instagram, I am Al Harris. The website, I am Al Harris.com. YouTube, Al Harris Fit for a King. And I'll be looking forward to it. You know, let's connect, let's work, let's make a difference, let's impact, let's leave our print.